बिस्मिल्लाहमान रहीम हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रहमान डिजिटल प्रोडक्शन दिस इज़ लेक्चर नंबर सेवेंटी नाइन ऑफ फिज़िक्स डियर लर्नर्स यस्टरडे वी लर्न अ वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट फार्मूला एंड दैट इज स्पीड इज इक्वल टू फ्रीक्वेंसी टाइम्स लेमडा विच इज़ दी वेव लेंथ टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू find the learn the usage of this formula in the form of example 13.1 and the question is saying that wavelength of a moving wave on a slinky with frequency 3 hertz so they given us frequency is equal to 3 hertz that is the first information and a wavelength which we are always denoting with the lambda sign and that is 0.3 meter what is the speed super class easy is uh, v is equal to f lambda so we have to put the values and then we will write meter per second and when we calculate it it will be equal to 0.9 meter per second so we found the uh, speed of the wave now in the second example let us uh, use it in more complex way the speed c of a green light of wavelength this is example 13.2 and they given us first the wavelength is uh, lambda is equal to 0.6 micrometer which is equal to 0.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 meter and the speed is given as which is v and that is given to b 3.0 into 10 raised to the power it is 8 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second and they are saying what is the frequency we have to find the frequency as v is equal to f m to lambda this implies that f is equal to v divided by lambda and we are putting the value 3.0 into 10 raised to the power 8 divided by 0.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 when we calculate this we will get f to be 5.0 into 10 raised to the power 14 hertz now ladies and gentlemen you can see from these two examples that there is a great difference uh in the speeds and frequency uh from the two word example have you noticed that the speed and frequency of green light which is a part of electromagnetic wave spectrum are very much greater than the speed and frequency of the waves in the slinky in the slinky it is very small while in spring it is very very large in fact the speed of light in vacuum is the limiting or maximum speed that no no moving body can exceed uh and let me tell you that this is 300 million meter per second is the speed 
so you can imagine how fast is that uh, we will look at the amazing electromagnetic waves of which visible light is only one member of the family in tomorrow's lecture inshallah now let us talk about the wave production and the ripple tank now we can see the uh, waves produced in a pond by throwing a pebble inside it in that case we will observe circular waves in second case we can also observe the wave in the slinky or rope those are straight waves those are the straight waves now if we want to observe the waves in the laboratories then in the laboratory we can observe not only the waves but also their different properties such as reflection refraction production etc by means of a ripple tank now ripple tank is a very important device for the study of properties of matter in earlier section we have seen how waves are produced in ropes and slinky spring we have also seen how a falling pebble produces circular water waves in a pond of still water in the laboratory water waves can be easily generated by means of a ripple tank now the figure on the right side of your screen is showing the ripple tank it is a very useful apparatus not only to generate water waves but also to demonstrate wave properties such as reflection and refraction is i told you now structure of the water uh, of the ripple tank we will discuss the structure that what are there inside this the ripple tank consists of a shallow glass bottom tray and you can see that there is a glass bottom tray which is in this location at the upper part a light source in this case there is a lamp directly above the tray and a white screen there is a white screen when we were doing this experiment in the university so we were in the school as well uh, and in the college we were using a white paper putting at the bottom of that and that is used to capture the image of the shadows form when water waves traverse the tray so this is the general construction with one more thing there is a straight dipper which is this one there is a straight dipper through which we can produce or generate the waves and there are circular spherical as well which can produce the circular waves generating waves plane waves and circular waves that is the next topic in the ripple tank plane waves can be sent uh, uh, can be set up by using a straight dipper made up of 
either wood or plastic. Circular waves can be formed by using a spherical dipper made of plastic, as I shown you in the figure earlier. When the straight dipper is placed in the water and vibrated by means of a motor. Now, remember here that we can vibrate it with the help of a motor or manually as well. But there is a difference. The motor will produce the waves in a uh, specified pattern while if we are dipping it manually with hand it will produce the waves but those waves will be not in a particular uh, shape so seeing only the waves at the screen then it's okay that if you are doing it with the motor or with the hand but there is a motor coming with it with this uh, instrument so you have to use if by any means the motor is out of order you can vibrate that dipper with hand as well these waves will be seen as bright and dark fringes on the screen below the tree these lines shows position of the crest and trough of the waves when we were observing that in university, the teacher told us that the dark lines are showing the crest while the white portion in this area is showing the crest. So remember these two things. Now, uh, very important topic we are, but let us first discuss that wave produce is in this form and we are not weaving, th weaving these waves from top we are seeing it from side of that ripple tank so you will observe that the wave produce are in this way you can observe that the wavelength in the first two waves are greater and then it is shorter why we will discuss that in a moment in the subsequent topic but you have to keep in mind that these are the uh, this is the view from side of the ripple tank now next topic is effects on a wave going from deep to shallow water now, first of all, we have to learn that what is deep water and what is shallow water. Uh, did you know that when waves from the sea is coming to the shore, they are just occurring at the shore, but they are produced somewhere else. So, at different part of the sea, waves are denoted by different names depending on their wavelength there are two types of water waves one is called deep water waves and the second is called shallow water waves these two are different waves and it totally depending on the wavelength which is occurring either in the sea or in the river or in the ripple tank so different wavelengths will give you different depths now let us first talk about the deep water waves deep water waves are at depths greater than half of that wavelength what does it mean it means that if the wavelength of what the, the wave produce is 100 meter so the wave we will observe is called a deep water wave if it is at the depth of 50 meter so it is the half of the wavelength 
if the wavelength is 100 meter so at the depth of 50 meter those waves will be known as the deep water waves on the other hand shallow water waves are those one that occurs at depth shallower than the wavelength of the waves divided by 20 so if we are considering the same wave of the 100 meter so if we divide it by 100 meter 100 meter by 20 so it will be equal to 5 meter so at 5 meter the wave will be shallow water waves but at 50 meter it will be deep water wave deep water wave and shallow water waves are behaving differently now dear learners you might have observed in the swimming pool that there is a separate place for small children and there is a separate place for adults so one is shallow water and one is the the shallow water is for small children and the deeper water is for the adults now shallow water is interacting with the bed of sea or anywhere they are produced and they are affecting it while the deep water waves are not affected by the bed of the place for example seabed or the ripple tank bed where they are occurring remember that the wavelength as you can see in this figure lambda 1 and the wavelength of the shallow water is different from each other first of all let me tell you that we are observing these waves from above it is written here that view from the above now you can see that lambda 2 is less than lambda 1 as a result v2 will be less than lambda 2 is lambda 2 is less than lambda 1 so v2 which is speed is less than v1 so you can see that the shallower water is slowly moving as it is denoted here while the deeper water is moving fast because their wavelength are different so their speed will also be different uh, here you can see that the wavelength is almost half of this area this and this area are almost half of each other so you can observe these things now very important properties is reflection and refraction and we will discuss that in a moment but let us first technically uh, talk about the effects on water uh, of waves going from deep to shallow water we discuss it but let us discuss it in a bit detail if you place a glass plate in the tray so that a region of shallow water is created and you know how to create it by the wavelength first you have to find the wavelength and you have to divide that wavelength by 20 and whatever the result it if it is uh, 20 uh, centimeter or 50 centimeter in case of the ripple tank then you have to put a glass there to observe the behavior of shallow water the wavelength of the plane waves 
shorten on passing from the deep water to shallow water as i told you that is lambda 2 is less than lambda 1 the speed of the waves at the shallow water is slower than that at the deeper water that is v2 is less than v1 i also told you this the frequency however remember this is unchanged as it is determined by the source so this frequency is remaining the same whether the wave is in the deeper water or in the shallower water in both cases the frequency will remain the same but in case of the uh, shallow water and deeper water the 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 wavelength and the speeds are different now let's turn our focus to reflection of waves uh, what is reflection the bouncing back of a wave is called reflection there are different type of reflection but we are not because there is regular reflection and irregular reflection we are not going into the detail of that that is not the uh, main purpose of this topic reflection means that waves can be reflected can we observe it with the help of the uh, ripple tank yes here in the ripple tank in this particular region there is a straight barrier put it when the waves are created that barrier is at an angle of 45 degree so if the waves are going from this side you can see that it is going and when we when it is colliding with this straight barrier then it is reflected with the 90 degree angle this is the normal to this surface let us discuss that what is the difference between perpendicular and normal and then we will discuss the other thing ladies and gentlemen if there is a line this one and at the edge if it is making an angle then this is called perpendicular but if there is a surface on which in the middle there is a 90 degree angle then you are not calling it perpendicular it is known as normal to the surface if there is a surface like this and you are putting a rod to the surface like this then this is normal if you are having a sphere football and then you are putting pin on one point of that and 90 degree then you cannot call it as a perpendicular one it is not a perpendicular it is known as normal to the surface so if there is a line and there is an angle of 90 degree we are calling it as a uh, perpendicular but if there is a plane and there is a rod or a pen at 90 degree then we are calling it as normal so uh, in this case there is a normal to the surface there is you can see the barrier is a surface which is this one and there is an angle which is normal it is denoted here as well that it is a normal so when we are talking about the normal then they will be at and this angle will be equal to this angle 
first the waves are moving in this direction and after the reflection they are bouncing back in this direction so yes we can observe on the screen the reflection of the waves in ripple tank as well uh next we are having the refraction refraction of now what is refraction that is the topic of next uh unit but let me tell you if there is a glass slab of some thickness like this and if a ray is passing this is air which is not a denser medium there is a normal then this ray will deflect towards the normal and after getting out it will again so this bending of the rays towards the normal is called refraction so can we observe the refraction in this uh, ripple tank as well now ripple tank is a device which is specially designed for the observation of different properties of the waves so one property is refraction there is a diffraction but we are not talking about the diffraction of waves refraction of waves now if you are putting a glass by placing the glass block at an angle to the incoming plane waves just like i told you here that if we are putting a glass in the path of the incoming waves then the glass block will diffract the incoming waves here you can observe that the wavelength of the wave is different from the wavelength of the waves after the diffraction one thing the second is the direction of the waves before diffraction in this and after the diffraction it is in this way as i told you before entering the medium glass medium it is in this direction but its direction is slightly changed when it is passed to a denser medium so it is now i am giving you an example from our daily life if there is a river for example you are going to the river and you are at the bank of that river and if you are running your speed will be different but when you enter the water with the same speed you cannot go with the same speed in the water the water will block your speed it will reduce it so it means that your speed is reduced your wavelength of uh, the speed will also be reduced because speed is proportional to the wavelength so here if it is in only water it is in one direction but you can see that the direction is changed when it is going from only the water medium to the glass medium so as a result we can observe that there is a difference between the wavelength this difference in the depth of the water causes refraction 
of waves to occur uh ladies and gentlemen i have to stop it here for today tomorrow we will discuss a very interesting and amazing topic that is electromagnetic spectrum so we will discuss electromagnetic spectrum in greater detail tomorrow stick with me thank you very much for your time bye bye